welcome to Basketball Cinema, where we revisit the most important and iconic games in NBA history. I'm Jay Canada, and today we're looking at Game 4 of the 2011 NBA Finals between the Miami Heat and Dallas Mavericks. Ah. Uh. I, I'm honestly terrified to find out just how many LeBron haters find this video, like really scared. Today marks the third video in our four week series here on Basketball Cinema, looking at failed NBA super teams. Last week we chilled with Kobe and Shaq in LA where it doesn't rain, while today we're hanging with LeBron, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade. Wade doesn't rhyme with rain, Dwayne does. I could have just stopped after his first name. Gosh darn it, I'm bad at this. This video is sure to bring a sick smile to the faces of a lot of NBA fans who don't consider themselves fans of LeBron Jinx. Because as we all know, the 2011 NBA Finals were far and away the lowest moment in his career. I've seen countless requests from folks that I cover this game here on my channel, and I actually get it. If you're neutral about LeBron, it's actually just a mind-blowing moment in the NBA that a star of his caliber could come up so small. For LeBron fans such as my Self, well, it might be a tough video to make it through. I cannot lie about that. In arguably the most iconic off-court moment for any NBA player ever, in the summer of 2010, the reigning two-time league MVP and Cleveland-born LeBron James went on national TV to announce publicly that he was leaving his hometown team to join two other all nbaers in Miami. Um, in this fall, man, it's, it's very tough. Um, in this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. <laughs> I, I honestly still can't believe he did that. I mean, how, who thought, I just, I just can't believe it. Though excessive in nature, the response to James leaving the Cavs was predictably negative, with literally everyone in the basketball world not located in Miami turning on the new Big 3 Heat immediately. At least there was nothing LeBron could do to make things worse. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. Oh my good, this dude right here. I mean, now to be fair to LeBron, and I'll forever believe this, as dumb as the decision was, and his attitude when he first joined the Heat was, if that's the worst thing LeBron James has ever done in his life, I, I mean, come on, it could have been a lot worse. As I've established in this series here on my channel, super teams were not created by LeBron James. He was not a part of the first super team in NBA history, but the method in which he went about leaving Cleveland was truly a landmark moment for the NBA. James teamed up with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh, both members of the vaunted 2003 draft class and both perennial all-stars in the prime of their respective careers. Again, as an admitted LeBron fan, I remain far less jaded about the way he operates off the court than most of you jackals. In my opinion, LeBron was drafted to a franchise that simply failed to surround him with requisite talent and support enough to develop into a true contender year in, year out. So LeBron took things into his own hands. Basically, I've never been offended by his La GM alter ego. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. One of the reasons LeBron did that, take his career into his own hands, opting to sign as a free agent with the Heat, is that after seven seasons in the association without a ring, his critics were beginning to get loud. I'm talking like Andy Samberg as Carl in Parks and Rec loud. Is it hot in here? I feel hot. Are you guys hot? But come postseason time, he's the most overrated, overhyped superstar in my history in this business. Seriously. I mean, I see no difference. Despite establishing himself as an all-time great in the early stages of his career, LeBron did come up very small in the 2010 playoffs against Boston prior to leaving for Miami. However, alongside Bosch and Wade, the Heat were able to embrace the villain motif through the 2011 season, finishing with a 58-24 and record, with each of the big three being named an all-star, with both James and Wade making all NBA teams. Come the playoffs time, the Heat dusted the 76ers in round one, the reigning East champion Boston Celtics in round two, and finally the MVP Derrick Rose led Bulls in round three. One of the crazy things to look back at was that LeBron was actually outstanding in the first three rounds of the 2011 playoffs. He was averaging 26 points, nine rebounds, and six assists per game, hitting big shots in big moments, and playing lockdown series changing defense. The path for the Heat was seemingly paved in gold, or actually not in gold, not, not in purple and gold anyways, as Kobe Bryant and the LA Lakers were eliminated early in the playoffs, and instead of the reigning champs, Miami would face Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks with a ring on the line. The Mavs went 57 and 25 in 2011, and were led by their lone all-star Dirk Nowitzki. The big German averaged a modest 23 points a game in the regular season, but over the course of the playoffs, upped that total to 28 a game in truly dominant fashion. Despite lacking in star power, the Mavericks toppled Portland in round 
round one. The aforementioned Lakers in a sweep in round two, as well the upstart OKC Thunder in the conference finals. The Mavs were heavy underdogs prior to the series, however, with the Heat at minus 180 to win the series. Yeah, I don't know anything about sports betting, but apparently that means Miami should have won. Those geniuses in Vegas were surely happy to see the Heat take game one of the series 92-84, but after going up 15 points in the fourth quarter of game two, Miami choked the lead away and ended up losing by a bucket. The Heat recovered and took game three in Dallas by two points and had a chance to take a stranglehold 3-1 series lead in game four. Last week, I brought up a quote from Bill Simmons, which read, quote, since the 1976 merger, only one finals results still doesn't make sense on paper when the 0-4 Pistons defeated a more talented Lakers team. Now today I'll show you the first half of that thought from Simmons. Quote, there isn't a simpler team sport to understand than basketball. If two quality opponents play a seven game series, the dominant player should prevail as long as the talent level on both sides is relatively equal. Now that comment came from before 2011 and honestly sounds true. Until, however, Dirk Nowitzki went head-to-head -head with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh in the finals. Would Dirk survive long enough to get the last laugh and prove Bill Simmons' theory wrong? Well, how about we go find out? Just prior to tip, I feel like I should point out that LeBron was averaging about 20.7 rebounds per game in the three games to begin the NBA Finals. It wasn't until here in Game 4 where the wheels really began to fall off. Dirk Nowitzki was on an absolute mission, opening the game with a patented fadeaway over his left shoulder. Next possession down, Dirk caught on the low left block, leaned back over his right shoulder and converted. Clutch reminder here from Mike Breen. Well, the Mavericks don't want to fall down 3-1 because no team in finals history has come back from being down 3-1. Ah. Dwayne Wade lost the handle on his drive to the rack, and Dirk went to 3-for-3 three three to begin the game with a high-arching beauty over the helpless Joel Anthony. Dirk was averaging 28-10 and 10 over the first three games of the series, and had a seemingly different demeanor during this series than ever before. He was, he was not going to let us lose. The, the way he prepared the whole year for it, he hated Miami. He hated Le Le LeBron, Wade, uh, Bosch. He's never going to say that, but he couldn't stand it. I mean, if even Dirk Nowitzki hates you, clearly you've made some bad decisions, Miami. Chris Bosch leaned into the Heat's first basket of the game on a rhythm mid-range jumper. Spectacular defensive play here by LeBron, who was very much still in his athletic prime, ball hawking like he was Ed Reed or something. But Canadian big man Joel Anthony would miss three straight looks around the rim. LeBron's passivity wasn't all that apparent in the early stages, though his first shot attempt of the game was an ugly hanging floater which he obviously missed. A third early hoop for Chris Bosh with another fader, JJ Barea opening his account with a difficult finish through traffic, and Dwayne Wade collecting an O-board before acrobatically finishing at the rim. He down two now, LeBron with a clean catch and shoot opportunity from deep, but he missed it. Tyson Chandler taking a pretty pocket feed from Jason Terry and finishing with a dunk. The first look at the Mavs' defensive strategy against LeBron. Jason Kidd was his much smaller primary matchup. LeBron instinctively went into a post up, Sean Marion with the instant double on James's dribble, and LeBron was forced into being a passer. He actually initiated what would be a great look for Mario Chalmers, with James himself eventually tipping in the miss. Jason Terry was the true X factor for the Mavs this series. And numbers the other way. Terry puts up a three. It's good. He'd go on to average 18 points a game, making big shot after big shot. Chalmers with a nice shovel feed off to Dwayne Wade for the slam. Dwayne with six first quarter points, and LeBron with another great defensive read, his second steal. More Mavs D, as LeBron attacked the middle of the court against Deshaun Stevenson, he was met at the point by three Dallas defenders, again forcing him to give up the ball. In the bonus, LeBron was sent to the line to end the quarter, making both freebies. He finished the first quarter with four points, two rebounds, and two steals. Great start to the game there, Braun. More Bosch business to begin the second quarter. He nestled home a little midi from the right mid post. Next time down, he attacked Brendan Haywood off the bounce and finished with his left hand. Third year Mario Chalmers continuing to make plays. In transition, finding Mike Miller the killer open from deep. That's a pure stroke, man. Moments thereafter, though, Deshaun Stevenson from the corner answering with a triple of his own. This first half belonged to Chris Bosch, taking another feed from Chalmers on the roll and slamming with authority. Deshaun Stevenson a timely answer with his second consecutive three ball. Bosch, though, taking another, another feed from Chalmers on the cut, finishing this time with a layup. Dirk had gone silent for the Mavs since the early moments of the game. So Dallas once again turned to... Here the extra pass. Stevenson will try again. It's another play! The man was heating up. 
Finally, Dirk back at it. Another patented one-legged fadeaway made to look very easy, tying the game up at 34. Jason Terry with a confident two-point pull-up to take a two-point lead. And in transition, Sean Marion with a free bucket. That was a quick 9-0 run from the mound. Dwayne Wade, the man with the answer for Miami. A super tough make from the post over his left shoulder. LeBron had yet to attempt a shot in the second quarter, but dropped an absolute dime to the wide-open Joel Anthony under the rim. The Matrix with a silky answer, spinning and dropping in a floor. LeBron still being defended by Jason Kidd, didn't attack, but again facilitated a gimme basket for his teammate, D. Wade this time. Speaking of the man formerly known as The Flash, Wade, quick move, foul from behind, it still goes in. A ridiculous and one sequence, no clue how it went in, but who cares. Chris Bosh with a hoop from a super tough angle to give him 16 points in the half. Tyson Chandler answering for the Mavs with a finish through contact to tie it back up. Mario Chalmers a tidy floater to give the Heat a lead before half. The point guard had 5 points for assists already. But LeBron's lone shot attempt of the second quarter coming on a buzzer beating heave. And it was becoming noticeable. The, the playmaking was cool, sure, but just 4 points on 4 shot attempts for an entire half, LeBron? Important report here out of halftime from Doris Burke. Mike, we've confirmed that Dirk Nowitzki is playing tonight's basketball game with a fever perhaps as high as 101 or 102 degrees. Oh, that's right. A side plot to this finals ended up being LeBron and D-Wade mocking Dirk after game four about being sick. Weather is crazy. It's hard to go from 85 degree weather and then go to 90. <laughs> Gosh, these dudes were just on a mission to be the absolute worst. Sick or not, Dirk was on a mission himself to continue attack, taking a hit and getting to the stripe for two. LeBron with his first attempt from the paint in this game, a very makeable left-handed lay, which he did miss. JJ Barea was a low-key killer for the Mavs in this series. A confident pull-up midi from the free throw line. More quick ball movement from James in the heat, leading to a strong attack and finish from Wade. Former Suns star Sean Marion with a productive 10 points thus far in the game. Nice dunk off the Chandler feed. This time down, Marion ducking in and finishing around LeBron after the Berea feed. Listen guys, the man wasn't scoring or shooting, I, I get it, but this was pretty nifty. Marion has their last six points. James inside the way. Another great pass from LeBron James. LeBron in transition, another missed layup that you'd expect him to make. However, he did follow, collect the board, and set up Wade for some free throws. A quick back and forth sequence here in the third quarter. JJ Brea slicing and dicing for a super tough finish through traffic. LeBron cut off on his drive by Jason Kidd, but was able to drop a dime to Chris Bosh on the midi. Brea would miss on a floater, but Tyson Chandler right there for the tap-in, putting the heat on for Miami. Tries again, pulls back to fire and he knocks it down just a special shot from D Wade. And it's at this point things had become obvious. This was Dwayne Wade's team. He was the guy looking for his shot. He was the one making things happen. Wade giving his all, all over the court, stealing away a rebound from Sean Marion before LeBron was set up for a great look at three. He bricked it and was just one for seven on the game now. Marion finishing his own miss with a quick putback to put the Mavs back up. Down three, Miami had an answer. Once again, D Wade attacking hard and flashing to the rim for a finish. Wade then making things Things happen defensively, stealing the pass, leading to LeBron's first basket since the four minute mark of the first quarter. Finally! Seemingly reinvigorated by that dunk, LeBron actually attacked in transition and was fouled, but he couldn't get out of his way this game as he'd miss both free throws. Yikes. Alley up to Wade and he finishes! Oh, perfect pass! And Dwayne Wade throws it down! Yeah, okay, fine. That, that was a pretty special play. Credit where it's due. Despite the missed free throws, this was the best three-minute stretch for LeBron, as he'd fade from the elbow over Jason Terry for a bucket. You see, Bron, that wasn't difficult at all. Just, just do some more of that, please. So here we are in the fourth quarter. Heat with a nice four-point lead. LeBron James, however, had scored just nine total points in the fourth quarter of the first three games of the series. The Miami lead was extended as Mike Miller stroked another deep bomb from the corner. Another timely play from Chalmers who stripped Dirk on the drive. That was turned to offense as Rio set up Udonis Haslam this time for the jumper. Nine-point lead for the Heat. 
Ugly turnover by LeBron with just under 10 minutes remaining. Whistled for the travel. Jason Terry answered that with his second hoop of the fourth quarter, a little push shot from the lane, cutting the lead down to five. Another ridiculous play here from Wade. Anticipating an air ball from Chalmers from the corner, he came down with it and put it back up and in. After a pair of free throws for Dirk on the ensuing possession, he'd operate around Haslam, finishing with his left. The Mavs slipped into a 2-3 zone for the first time in the game. LeBron was able to cut perfectly through it, however, and he passed out of what should have been a gimme layup. He went full Ben Simmons. Nowitzki inside the Chandler, blocked. Oh snap, Wade went full 2016, LeBron. What a beast, man. In case any of you guys are a bit too young to remember Prime Wade, uh, yeah, he was pretty special. His knees would betray him in the ensuing years, but even here in 2011, he was clearly the best player on the court, on track to win finals MVP. I'll be honest too, in addition to LeBron looking like a shell of himself, which is just shocking, it's also just weird to revisit a time, the only time really, in which someone else playing with LeBron was the guy instead of him. Dirk took a bailout feed from Jason Terry on the perimeter, was fouled, and sent to the line where he made both. Chris Bosh a clean look off the inbounds, but he had gone ice cold since the first half. Nah, but seriously, Wade was making all the plays, protecting the rim once again. Unfortunately, Chandler was right there to clean it up for Dallas. It was just a one-point game now. And with 6'2 Jason Terry guarding him, LeBron was unable to establish position down low, leading to an eventual turnover by Miami, and Jason Terry would finish to take the lead. Trying to answer, Wade controlling the possession for the Heat with LeBron standing helplessly in the corner, the Mavs forced yet another ugly turnover. This was a mess for the Heat, man. Wow. Jason Terry, another slick play, finding Chandler on the roll. Tyson was fouled and sent to the line where he'd make one of two. This game got super ugly shortly thereafter, with Mike Miller coming up way short on a three-point attempt for the Heat, then Jason Terry missing way long on an attempt for the Mavs. Dwayne Wade tried his hand at a pull-up triple, but it was no good. Literally everybody was missing shots down the stretch, except LeBron, of course because he wasn't taking any. Wait, no, I'm wrong. He did take a shot, a step back too, and yeah, he bricked it. Well, Mike Miller would grab the O board, but eventually he too missed a layup. After Dirk made a pair from the stripe, the Heat took possession again. And this is a perfect example of how LeBron really failed in 2011. He controlled the ball on high, but instead of attack Stevenson, he reset the ball to Chalmers. He then worked off a pick and roll, without so much as looking at the rim, he let the Mavs switch and Chandler drop all the way back to the paint, then instead of being the guy to take the shot with the shot clock winding down, he put the ball in the hands of Chris Bosch to do something. I mean, Bosch got fouled, sure, but that was the definition of passive, in my opinion. Great closeout defense from LeBron in the Heat, as the Mavs would come up empty, but again LeBron refusing to attack, and the Heat saw Udonis Haslam miss a jumper in a big spot. Jason Terry found himself a perfect look at a potential dagger, but was off. But Chandler grabbed them another possession. After killing some clock, Deshaun Stevenson had a chance to put the game away. Stevenson for three, another miss. Couldn't get it to go, and a heads up play as LeBron tossed it all the way up court and Wade was fouled. He were set up nicely for a two for one as well. The rebound. Yeah, that miss, uh, th th that really hurts. Real bad. Still though, time left on the clock, meaning the Heat just needed to step up on D, but... He's going too early. Drives underneath, layup, he puts it in! Nowitzki makes it a three-point game! Timeout Miami! Jeff was probably right that he went too early, but obviously a huge bucket regardless. Also, since this is just a dump on LeBron James video, look at his lack of defensive presence on that basket from Dirk. Obviously leaving Jason Terry in the corner wouldn't be smart, but LeBron just stood there and watched Dirk make his move. He didn't contest him at the rim. He didn't dig down on the dribble to try for a steal. Didn't even make Dirk think that he might bring help to affect the drive. Nothing. Still though, Miami with time left to do something, 14 seconds left, Dwayne Wade taking things into his own hands, blowing past Tyson Chandler for a quick dunk, back to a one-point game. Jason Terry was fouled on the inbounds, and with absolute ice in his veins, the Jets stepped up and converted both, putting the Mavs up three. One last chance for the Heat with 6.7 seconds remaining. Miller looking, finds Wade. Wade lost the ball, goes to the backcourt, gets it to Miller. Miller puts it up. Air ball. And that's it. The Mavericks have even the series.
What a game and what a series. As per usual, spot on Mike Breen. LeBron relegated to the role of decoy, standing in the corner with Jason Terry guarding him. If all things were equal, Dwayne Wade probably should have received criticism, a lot of it, for missing a clutch free throw and fumbling the ball on that final possession. But all things weren't equal. LeBron James finished Game 4 of the 2011 Finals with 8 points on 3 for 11 shooting. His fourth quarter stat line, in case you were wondering, 0 points, 1 assist, 2 turnovers with just 1 shot attempt. Wow. Trying to summarize everything that has happened with LeBron James since this fateful night in June 2011 is straight up impossible. I can't possibly emphasize any further just how brutal a performance he put forward in Game 4 of the Finals, but the crazy thing is, it was still only Game 4 and the series was tied 2-2. LeBron still had a chance to correct things. Unfortunately though, he didn't. He didn't come close to making up for his 8 point showing either. The Heat would lose both games 5 and 6, with LeBron scoring just 17 and 21 points respectively. The reaction to LeBron's performance in Game 4, as well as the series as a whole, was predictably ruthless. So you could get back on the court and make up to millions upon millions of fans who watched you wet the bed in the fourth quarter. That's what you need to be doing. This was his turn and his time to live up to being a back-to-back -back MVP and the most talented player this game has ever Ever seen. And this time, he wasn't even La Robin James. He was La Alfred James. Gosh, this was easily the best stretch of Skip Bayless's life. It even had LeBron philosophizing about his socioeconomic status in America and the lack of monetary prowess his haters have. Because at the end of the day, um, all the people that was rooting on me to fail, you know, at the end of the day, they got to wake up tomorrow, have the same life that they had um, before they woke up today. You know, they got the same personal problems that they had today. LeBron decided to dunk on all the trolls after the worst moment of his career. I, I kind of respect it, actually. The 2011 finals still get brought up on a daily basis 10 plus years later when discussing LeBron James' legacy. Because for a number of misguided mutant haters, LeBron's biggest failure outweighs any of the historic achievements he's accomplished in the years since. And that don't make much sense. LeBron and the Heat were certainly a failed super team in 2011, but thanks to lessons learned, were able to turn the tables completely. They'd go on to win the title in both 2012 and 2013, with LeBron personally showing up huge on the big stage. They never won, not three, not four, not five, but did manage two rings in four years together, which if we're being fair, isn't too shabby. The 2011 finals might be a giant eyesore on LeBron's personal resume. Even diehard stands of the man can't deny that. But at the same time, it was clearly a learning lesson for James. He'd work hard to correct the flaws in his game, which were brutally exposed by Dallas. And 10 years later, LeBron James is a four-time NBA champ, a four-time finals MVP. Who knows how his career would have turned out had Wade carried the heat to a chip in 2011. Maybe LeBron did need to be severely humbled in order to truly become the king. That sh** burns me to this day. I always talk about the best teacher in life is experience, so I've experienced a lot. So that's what prompted me to be who I am today, is being able to have those experiences. For each game covered here on Basketball Cinema, I'll be giving out three awards, beginning with the Clint Hawkeye Barton Award for Most Underrated Performer. I don't care which goes to Deshaun Stevenson. Stevenson and LeBron have a long history together. As Deshaun once called him overrated, LeBron answered by beating Stevenson and the Wizards in the playoffs in back-to-back -back years. However, Deshaun played a key role in defending LeBron in 2011, as he was on the court for the entirety of the fourth quarter in this game four, and had that big 11-point explosion in the first half. Also should mention, Deshaun has said he regretted his beef with LeBron, and also, also, apparently his nickname was Papa Smurf. Thanks for that once again, and basketball reference. The Rick Dalton uh, uh. award for most recognizable moment goes to La Flop. Here's the personal foul. That's a flop. That's that's the acting <laughs> Stevenson was talking about. Ah yes, this was really when LeBron started to take serious heat for his flopping on the court. I actually forgot about that. Jeff Van Gundy really didn't appreciate it, by the way. Those type of those type of plays to me are starting to make parts of our game a farce. It, it's happening more and more. Where is the cutoff? Oh, buddy, Jeff, just wait until you see the NBA in 2021. You're gonna hate it. Wait, I actually do think he hates the current game. It was all very predictable looking back with hindsight. And finally, the Mark Jackson. With all due respect. Award for weirdest moment in this game goes to Mike Breen when he said this. Tyson Chandler in his first year with Dallas 
but will be a free agent after this season. Obviously, so much depends on the collective bargaining agreement. Hopefully, they can avoid a lockout, but Mark Cuban certainly wants to re-sign Chandler. Sometimes I forget that the 2011 NBA lockout happened. It was a funny reminder to hear Breen make reference to it, obviously thinking there was no chance it would happen. But it did, and that's it. The Dallas Mavericks beat the Miami Heat 86-83 on June 7th, 2011. Less than a week later, they'd finish the Heat off in six games, officially delivering LeBrick James his second finals loss. Wait a minute, did I just say... Gosh darn it, Skip is rubbing off on me now. Unbelievable. If you enjoyed this episode of the show, please consider dropping a like down below. Also, subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment. All that good stuff helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Next week, we look at the most recent example of a super team that's failed in the NBA. And I'm talking like really recently. But until that one, I'm Jay Canada, and this has been Basketball Cinema. Thanks for watching this video, guys, if you did watch it and made it all this way. Let me just say, I made a few jokes about Skip Bayless in this video, and it was crazy going back and watching first take clips from 2011. I kid you not, Skip just, he hated LeBron so much. Like, we know he still does, but in 2011, that stretch when LeBron, like, gave him reason to criticize, my guy was on one. And yet, four titles later, four finals MVPs later, Skip is still doing basically the same thing. It's crazy, bro.